Please be seated. Dauert all feo Marian there is in thee no stain of original sin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The prophet of the New Testament, which is St. John the Evangelist, gives us in his book, the last book of sacred scripture, the Apocalypse, a description of a wonderful vision when he saw in the clouds of heaven while he was in exile on the island of Patmos. And he beheld in his vision a mysterious, mystical picture in the high heavens. When he writes, I saw a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. And this lightsome, mysterious, beautiful image of vision, which sends chance so in his vision above the clouds, the children of God in exile, the Christians on this earth in this valley of tears have envisioned and looked up to ever since. And the church today looks up to this woman conceived without any stain of original sin and to this woman who never committed any personal sin. St. John sees our Blessed Lady clothed with the sun. The sun is nothing else or nobody else than Jesus Christ himself who is the son of justice that is the source of all holiness. One time a priest said when he was teaching in the classroom to the children, when he explained the supernatural and heavenly beauty of our Blessed Lady, he told them that the sun is the most beautiful of all creatures in the entire visible creation. And he said to the children, look at it sometimes. And the boys and the girls answered, Father, I cannot look at it or gaze at the sun. It dazzles my eyes. It blinds me. But then the priest said, You are wrong. You must not look at the sun directly. To see its beauty you must look in the opposite direction. You must look at the rainbow after a thunderstorm. There you will see the beauty of the sunlight, the rays of the sun broken and reflected in the millions of little drops of water unfold to us the beauty of the purest light there is. And the same is true in a spiritual way. We cannot look at the Son of Justice, Jesus Christ itself, but we can look very comfortably to our Blessed Lady, which is a reflection of our Blessed Lord. Mary is the reflected beauty of Jesus Christ himself, and that's why we call her in, the lit in her litany, mirror of justice, which means 
reflected image of Jesus Christ, the Son of Justice and Holiness. When we look into history, we notice that there was a king, and history calls him the beautiful. It is King Philip of France, or Philip the Fair, the beautiful. And when he was a merely child in his mother's arms, his mother looked at him, and one day she said, as every other mother would, my dear child, how beautiful you are. And the boy then looked up to his mother and said, Mother, I am a picture of you. And this is true of our Blessed Lady. Our Blessed Lady, the Mark Conception, is a perfect picture. So much as it is possible for a human being, a perfect picture or image of Jesus Christ. Jesus alone could choose his mother, and so he did. He alone could prepare for himself his mother, or his dwelling place, or his inhabitation, as the liturgy calls it. And so he did. And this is the very reason why our Blessed Lady had to be exempt from the stain of original sin, because she had to be the mother of our Divine Redeemer. That's why we call her Immaculate conceived. Without a stain of sin. Immaculate and full of grace. O quam pulcra es. The eternal word exclaims, beholding his masterpiece of creation. O how beautiful you are. And the angels say, when our blessed lady was assumed into heaven, Queer sister, who is she? Who is she? Beautiful as the moon, bright and resplendent as the sun. And today, the church, and we all look up to her and we greet her as our dear mother. Our blessed lady is compared to the moon. But as you know, the moon has no light of itself. The beauty of the moon is the beauty of the reflected light of the created sun. Mary Immaculate and full of grace is the reflected beauty of Jesus Christ. If we look at creation, the beauty of the sun as you can see, it is mirrored in the rainbow or in the clouds of heaven or mirrored in the flowers or even in the butterfly. They have all absorbed the light of the sun and without the sun, all their beauty and color will fade away. And in a similar way, it is with Jesus Christ. But how beautiful must she be, whom the splendor of the Father and the brightness of the eternal light has chosen for his mother. And the church cannot find enough names 
and titles in her litany to extol and to praise Mary's greatness and beauty. And in this litany of the Our Blessed Mother, heaven and earth unites to extol and praise their Queen and Mother together. It is in accordance with divine providence that whenever God selects a person for some important mission, he first bestows on that person some kind of qualifications or grace which are needed for its faithful discharge of the fulfillment of this mission. When we think at the Old Testament, for example, when Moses hesitated to become the leader of Israel on the plea of his defective speech, when he said to God, I cannot go, I'm too weak, God said, fear not, I will be upon thy lips and I will teach thee what thou shalt speak. And we should always remember this when we have to bear difficulties and crosses. Fear not. If you think about St. John the Baptist, we reflected upon him last Sunday as he was sanctified in his mother's womb by the mediation of our Blessed Lady through her visit at Elizabeth, and how he was filled with the Holy Ghost to be the forerunner, the precursor of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we think about the apostles, how they were filled with the Holy Ghost and received the, the gift of tongues and so, through the entire history of the Church. But no one ever received a mission so exalted and so high as the Mother of our Divine Redeemer. And therefore, the Church repeats to us the words of David when he says, her foundations were laid in the holy mountains. Many times when we hear such a sentence, we really don't know what we should think about. But this means where the sanctity of the other saints ended, their merry sanctity just began. At the, first ex at the first beginning of her existence. Immaculate, the Immaculate Conception. And this is, why, this is the reason why when the angel comes, the angel Gabriel, to announce to our Blessed Lady the Incarnation, please note, that the angel does not address our Blessed Lady with her name, Maria or Mary. He does not even mention her name. He calls her, as it were, her name only with the title Grazia Plena, you are full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And therefore, the Church looks up to her today and greets her with the same words, Grazia Plena. There is no stain of sin in thee. And all her exterior beauty is just the only reflection of her interior beauty, of the interior beauty of her soul. And that's 
how we have to understand the saying of St. Bernadette of Lourdes when she says, if you have seen our blessed lady, you want to die in order to see her again. Such a beauty. And that is why the Church says, O quam pulcra es, O how beautiful you are. And in the name of all her children, the children of Mary, the Church arts, pray for us who have recourse to thee. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you.